Brahmacharya Sutras. Let me just read few words from the original sutra. Yesterday somebody wrote a letter to me. Swamiji, we are not able to understand the original sutra. Better you read only the translation. See, not only you, I also don't understand the original sutra. Because I don't know the language, this language. It's not Sanskrit. It's a different version of Sanskrit which was used for speaking in those days. So not only you, I also don't understand. But master's words, they have their own sanctity. Even if you don't understand, just listen. The word which came out of Mahavira naturally will carry you, carry his presence. The words, the very sound which came out of Mahavira's walk. Walk means the energy which converts sound, the air into sound. See, when the air travels till the walk, you call it as vocal cord. It's only air, pran. There something happens and that becomes a sound. So any sound which comes out of an enlightened vocal cord, enlightened walk energy is mantra. Is mantra. That is the reason I am reciting those words. So even if you don't understand, it's okay. Our respect to Mahavira that we should remember the same words. We should hear those same words. Then we will see the translation. I will read the translation also. But first, it is our respect to him, the great master Mahavira, that we repeat the same word which came out of his walk energy. His words. Chattari paramangani Tullahani Chandune Manu Sattam Sayisuddha Sanjamambi Yaviriyam Kamanam Tumaha Bahana Ye Anububvi Kyayivu Jeeva Sohi Manupatta Ayaya Indira Manusayam Manusattammi Ayavojo Dhamma Socha Sattahe Tavasiviryam Latum Sambute Nidunerayam The very word is sacred. Please understand, in the Eastern tradition, language is not only used to convey the ideas, it is used to create certain kind of vibrations also. So it is not only linguistic importance, phonetic importance is also added to language. Maybe when we find time, I will try to explain how the, the aksharas, in the letters in Sanskrit is beautifully carved and designed. If I start talking, we won't have time for these things. <laughs> if the tongue moves the front and back, first level aksharas, the side and side, second level aksharas. It's a, if you see your tongue movement, a, a, i, i, u, u, all the Samskrita aksharas, the letters, it is just a beautiful dance. And it's like a cleaning your prana flow. A person who ch chants some mantra, at least 10 minutes every day morning will never have gas problem. Understand? It's my personal experience. If you have any gas problem, 
or any difficulty related to breathing, the prana flow, any asthma or anything, just chant some mantras, some enlightened master's words. You may not understand it. Chant those words, which is in Sanskrit, the traditional language. Just chant for 10 minutes. You may think, how can creating some sound for 10 minutes can heal Swamiji? You don't know the power of these sounds. They come from the hara, means your very root and completely heal the whole path in which the prana flows. The whole prana energy is cleaned. That is why I never miss the original sutras. Even if you don't understand, many times I have seen people are closed. To something which they don't directly understand. In Gita books also I have seen people, they just move the page where the Sanskrit month slokas are printed and they just jump, they go to the next page. They think, oh, why should I touch unnecessarily these things? No. Just try. Try to experience that sound. You don't even have to understand. Try to experience that sound. It can do miracles in your being. Let us enter into the translation. It is indeed very difficult for anyone in this world to achieve these four things. Human body, Manushyatva, listening to Dharma, Dharma Shravana, devotion and progress towards the spiritual experience, enlightenment. Here the viryam word has been translated into restraint. But I tell you, that word is, that word means going towards higher energy, going towards higher consciousness. Beautiful sutra, it is indeed very difficult for anyone in this world to achieve these four things. Human body, listening to dharma, devotion and, rest and higher energy. While walking on planet earth through different forms, when the pressure exper exerted by the sinful karma's veins becomes less, then the soul attains purity and becomes eligible for a human birth. Only the one who is capable of listening to pure dharma and find trust in it and through right conduct releases the baggage of karma attains a human birth. He is saying only the one who is capable of listening to pure dharma. You may think, what is there? Why should we be capable of listening to pure dharma? Don't think listening to pure dharma is such an easy quality, simple quality, no. Even if you are sitting here, there can be thousands of obstacles inside your mind. It is not so easy to open to the real dharma. People come up with all kinds of weird excuses to escape from dharma. I have seen many people. He is so young, what he can teach? That's a big problem. What to do? Really, the spiritual field, always the age is a big problem. The Vedic tradition, age is not required to achieve enlightenment. See two things. Anubhava, Anubhudi. In Sanskrit, we have two words for experience. In English, we don't have two words because they do not know about Anubhudi. That is why no word exists. Anubhava, Anubhudi. Anubhava means experience by so many incidents in your life. 
Anubudi means experience of enlightenment. Let me explain. This Anubhava and Anubudi, then you will understand about the pure Dharma and how we are escaping from pure Dharma. Anubhava means going through many experiences like a first you touch the matchbox fire and you understand oh this fire will burn then you touch the fire in the oven and you say oh this fire also burns then you touch the cigar cigarette fire oh this fire also burns you touch all kinds and all variety of fires and understand, oh, all these fires are going to burn me. By the time you come to the conclusion, all fire will burn by touching and touching and touching and experiencing, your body will be ready to be burnt. You will become old enough <laughs> to be burnt. This is called Anubhava, means adding more and more experiences and doing big analysis coming to the conclusion. Anubhudi means first time you touch one fire and realize, experience the truth, all fire will burn. All fire will burn. Just one experience is enough to give you the truth. This is called Anubhudi. See, Anubhava means the number of incidents which happens in your life, Anubhudi means number of lessons you learn from the incidents in your life. There is a big difference. For outer world you need Anubhava, for inner world you need Anubhudi. There is a big difference between this Anubhava and Anubhudi. Enlightenment. And there is another one category who are beyond Anubhava and Anubhudi, they don't even touch the fire. They just see somebody else touching the fire and realize that fire will burn. They are called Paramahamsas. <laughs> they are called <laughs> Paramahamsas. They don't even go through one experience. They just see other, what others go through and escape. If I have to give a, another one example, you can see in your life, you always postpone life. The person who constantly postpones the joy and bliss, he waits, he will have anubhava and enjoy. Person who tries and lives the life, he starts expressing anubhudi. Person who sees others and learns the lesson without even going through uses the knowledge of others' research and development is Paramahamsa. Spiritual enlightenment does not need Anubhava, age. It needs Anubhudi. Many times, when we don't want to listen to the higher truths, we create all kinds of confusions, difficulty for ourselves. Mind is so cunning, Whenever you can't practice some truths, you just try to laugh as if he is practicing or what. Forget about it. All are like us only. When you can't come out of hypocrisy, you feel comfortable thinking or believing that everybody is hypocritical. When we can't come out of our hypocrisy, we just want, when we can't raise ourselves to the higher spaces, at least we feel comfortable with pulling others to our space. <laughs> that is why our mind creates enough of difficulties to listen to the higher truths. The on, only the one who is capable of listening to pure dharma means person who is ready to transform person who is not ready to transform, you will find thousand reasons not to sit here 
or not to listen. You will find thousand reasons. And you can always find reasons. You can always find reasons. It's not a big thing. You will find thousands of reasons. Only the one who is capable of listening to the pure dharma and find trust in it. Understand, do not take yourself for granted. Many times, I have seen people come and sit and listen all these things. The end of the discourse, they come and tell me, Swamiji, I am listening so many things. I really trust, but I don't know how to become enlightened. I tell them, the first thing, celebrate. You have taken such a wonderful steps. First thing, you are sitting here. Second thing, you are feeling connected. That is the reason you are continuing to sit. And third thing, you are trying to work towards this. Means you are trusting it. Celebrate all the achievements which you did. Then we can find little time later on to repent what you have not achieved. Do not take yourself for granted. Celebrate that you being here and feeling connected and having trust in these great words. You have done great things according to Mahavira. According to Mahavira. Now you need to take only one step. Through right contact, releasing the baggage of karma attains the higher consciousness. Understand? The last step, you don't even have to struggle. Just sit and listen intensely and let these words be allowed to work on you. You will see you are doing it. You will see you are doing it. One, just for one example, if I am talking about fasting and clearly explain and tell you do not eat tonight and if it goes straight and touches your heart, you think you will be able to go and eat? No, you won't be. Simply you will see that you are not even having the idea of eating. Only one thing, allowing these words to penetrate you. When you allow these words to penetrate you, you don't even have to bother about, you don't even have to plan how to practice. If you are sitting here and planning how to practice, you will miss the words which I am uttering. So don't plan. Allow them first. Let them go into your being. Let them work on you and find its own way. They are capable enough to show you the way to express themselves in your life. I always tell people, whenever you listen, the great truths, don't plan how you will go back to your house and start practicing it. No. If you practice, if you plan, you will be a failure. Just listen. Let these words go into your being. Let them work on you. They will find their own way to express themselves in your through your system, through your body. Because they are very powerful. Understand? They are very powerful. They are not simple as you think. They are so powerful. And simply they will work on you. They have their own independent intelligence. The master's words have got independent intelligence. They work on their own. Let us start the sutras word by word. It is indeed very difficult for anyone in this world to achieve these four things. Almost all the great masters are telling, you have achieved difficult thing, manushyatva. Same way Shankara is also telling, manushyatva. Mumukshutva Mahapurusha Samsama Samyama. Understand? Achieving human body and seeking for enlightenment and the satsanga means the nearness of an enlightened being. Very difficult. Here Mahavir is saying human body 
is very difficult for anyone in this world to achieve because only from human body you can experience enlightenment. Understand? Human body is like a runway. Whether you want to take off or land, you have to take only human body. You can't become enlightened from the Devata Sariras, Sarira of angels. No. You can't become enlightened from the body of animals. No. They don't have the possibility. Only from here, human body can go to hell or heaven. You have choice only in human body. Other bodies don't have choice. They go through a clear program. They may have little freedom. But all the senses and the mind has got freedom only in human body. Understand? In other animals, they may have freedom in one sense or two sense. They will not have complete freedom. Means the choice to choose the human body, all your five senses and your mind, all